Now you already probably seen the part 1 of this teardown where I couldn't really figure out how to get into this keyboard without breaking it. Well a bunch of you left very helpful comments saying that there are a bunch of screws that are hiding underneath the keycaps in between the key switches which me being an idiot completely ignored. So in this video let's try to open it up from the keycaps. So yeah first we'll have to get rid of all these keycaps. Ah that's better. Once all the keycaps are off you get a clear understanding of where the screws are and uh, trust me even in this brightly lit environment they're not easy to spot. Cosmic Byte has done a pretty good job of hiding these screws with the same paint as the front panel so even I had a pretty tough time finding out all the screws. They were a little tight at first but I could eventually get them off. That's what she said. But once all the screws are on to the side we can kind of pry open this thing. And that's when most of our guesses were true. We kind of knew that all the key switches are uh, soldered down to the board and uh, that's true. The front panel itself is the board and the back panel is just a plastic, well, just a plastic container that holds everything together. The cable, the switches are all mounted on this front piece which is a metallic piece and that holds the most amount of weight. As we can clearly see from the back here, every single one of these key switches are soldered on. So yeah, there's no hope of them being hot swappable. You have to desolder them first and then solder any other switch that you have in its place. And since I don't have a soldering station or even any prior experience, I'm not going to be trying anything like that anytime soon. If you decide to tear down yours, then just be careful because these solders are pretty sharp and they can hurt your fingers. They're like little alligator teeth. As I said before, the front panel with the motherboard and everything weighs the most at around 490 grams. The back panel is only around 140 grams. There aren't any metal sheets or anything that are supposed to add any structural weight to it because the, the front panel is metal itself. So that itself acts as a, uh, a structural hold to the entire keyboard. And no, we can't dissect this any further since uh, the switches are soldered on through the board. So the front panel and the board are held together. So there's, there's no way we can get underneath these unless you desolder every single switch. But I figured since we've already opened this keyboard up, might as well put some foam in the back panel. I found this handy little piece of foam along with some, maybe some shirts or something that I bought. Well, that seems to be the right size here. So I can cut it to length and place it inside the back panel. Hopefully that will dampen the sound a little bit. You know, looking at this, some people might ask why even bother, right? Why not buy just an expensive keyboard that will be super high quality in every way and that way you won't have to tinker with your keyboard spending a lot of time on this. And I agree, time and money are uh, kind of interdependent sometimes. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, you may have to spend a lot of time kind of uh, tinkering it and making it just the way you like it. That's exactly what we are doing. Instead of buying a 10,000 rupee keyboard, we are buying a 2000 rupee keyboard and customizing it to our preference. Not to show off or anything, but if I wanted to, I could buy a keyboard that's 10 times Times expensive as this without even thinking about what's in my bank account but that's not what it's about I'm a tinkerer I like to open stuff up that I already own see what's inside and uh, customize it to my liking and doesn't matter if it's a 2,000 or a 10,000 rupee item I'm still gonna open it up and see what's inside so might as well buy something budget which is kind of good enough and make it better instead of experimenting with a super expensive equipment I mean my previous phone this one which was 17,000 rupees I opened it up many times but this phone which is 45,000 I don't really dare to open it myself because uh, I don't want to damage it because when you're spending a lot on your devices at some point they end up becoming your investments rather than just a purchase. I guess it kind of is an investment I mean it is improving my user experience on a daily basis but I don't have to worry about it breaking or even if it does break I don't have to break my bank in the process. And for the most part this is an excellent keyboard for 2000 rupees. Sure the stabilizers on the spacebar aren't that great we've already discussed about that but for the vast majority of people this is more than enough. This is a rigid mechanical keyboard that will last you a very long time. Unless you're okay going for more expensive versions, I don't think you should spend anything more than this. Especially if you're like me who don't have any prior experience with mechanical keyboards. So this is a good entry level for me and I suggest the same for you as well. Once we use this and we understand the lay of the land, then we can go for more expensive versions which uh, offer hot swappable switches and things like that. But that's what you need to understand about uh, customizing your stuff. Like it's not about how to make it better or how much does it cost or whatever, but it's about the experience. Like I can now say I know this keyboard inside out, end to end literally. Now that we're here, let's see how the RGB looks through the key switches without the keycaps on.
that's pretty cool isn't it i mean i've seen even more expensive keyboards that don't have rgb quite on par with this thing so that's definitely one of the strong points as i mentioned before anyway let's do a quick sound test to see if the foam that we added helped out in any way You know what, yeah, that definitely helped out a little bit. I mean, I can feel that every time I strike a key, there is a little less reverberation through the board now. I mean, the keycaps themselves still do make that flicking noise, but when you're operating the switches pretty fast, that's when you feel a little less reverb now. The sound doesn't echo as much inside the keyboard, if you know what I mean. I mean, I should have probably added another thin layer of foam, but uh, this is a good starting point. I'll probably open up again and uh, see what else I can do, but I think we'll leave it at that for now. I'm happy with this. It's a shame that we can't directly replace those stabilizers with our own because, you know, they're all soldered onto a single piece of board, but uh, yeah, well, it is what it is. Again, I'm really happy with what I got here for the price. I'm not complaining at all. I'm simply pointing out a few things that I'm observing, that's all. Anyway, thanks to Swagata, Ashish, and a bunch of others who suggested this solution. I mean, without their helpful comments, I couldn't have figured out that there were screws underneath. I I am considering buying o-rings for all the keycaps and uh, see if they help out you know the o-rings can kind of uh, subdue that striking sound even a bit more so that's something that's planned for the future let me know what else customizations you have in your mind other than o-rings and loop and i know a lot of you are frustrated that uh, the the keyboard is just out of stock everywhere and i understand but one of you seem to have got in touch with cosmic byte and they seem to have gotten a response that they will be restocked by next month so that's pretty cool as of this video we are in the middle of june 2021 in another 15 days or so you should be able to reorder them after seeing this inside and out and doing all these mods, do I still recommend this keyboard? Absolutely I do. Like I said, it's still one of the best options out there to get as a mechanical keyboard enthusiast uh, just on entry level. So I don't have any prior experience with mechanical keyboards anyways and this is a good entry point for me. I think it will be the same for you as well. Subscribe if you haven't already and share this with those who are waiting for this teardown. I know a lot of you are eagerly asking me every time but finally I managed to tear it down and uh, show you what's inside. It isn't much but that's all I could show you. That's what she said. So until next time, relax, take good care of yourself. It's all gonna be okay. And I'll see you soon.